The Power of Now is a book written by a German author whose name is Eckhart Tolle. Um, I read this book because um, a few months back or earlier this year. I read, and I now read it is my book great book pleasure called, to uh, introduce um, to you. There's another book which I read this uh, earlier this year. It was called Ten Percent Happier. Um, so I read Ten Percent Happier earlier this year, and uh, I thought it was a great book. And uh, I'm not quite sure if it made me ten percent happier, but it made me happy for a brief while to know that you know I don't have to let emotions get the better of me. But there was a constant reference to this book in Ten uh, Percent Happier to the power of now in Ten Percent Happier because. The author, like uh, like you, me, everybody who's concerned about how to be and how to let um, go of certain things which make us angry, uh, wanted to figure out how to do things. And so in that process, he read a few self-help books on feeling good about oneself or discovering oneself or um, understanding where the hatred comes from, understanding everything. And then he read The Power of Now. Well, he now begins my review of The Power of Now. Um, I read it quite slowly because I was enjoying it. Um, I also wanted to absorb what the book contained. I won't be surprised if I read this book again. Yes, it is that damn good. Um, Dan Harris, the guy who wrote 10% Happier, was absolutely right. This book is outstanding. Um, there are several concepts. I, um, <laughs> to be honest, it's been about a couple of months since I finished the book, and I've already gifted it to someone to and I have suggested it to numerous other people, and uh, I want to recommend it to you out there who's uh, wondering if they should read it. Um, the power of now is realizing how we live um, in the future, and we live in the past in the hope that everything that we are concerned about will happen in the future, but it never really happens and everything in the past it still concerns you because you keep comparing your now with the past and in doing so you forget what is happening right now and that's, that is a trick which is played by our minds on all of us and uh, yes um, what was astonishing about the book is how simple the language was it was written in a very simple language and um, there are several concepts which flew over my head, like there is a concept of the being, which I found extremely confusing. Um, however, it's still worth a, a journey for a certain future time, you know. Um, whatever I read in the book, it was outstanding. I think the writing is very, very unique and simple to understand, and that is important because you don't want a lot of clutter in your brain anymore you just don't process that simply. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody, if they really want to, they can finish this book in a couple of hours if they're onto speed reading or something of that sort. But I suggest you don't do that. I suggest you read it daily for at least four or seven days like I did. And I say that because I want this book, uh, I want you to use this book not as a source of entertainment and or fiction. Well, it is a non-fiction, so what do you expect? But I want you to understand. The author woke up one day when he was 29 years of age and everything around him looked beautiful. He looked at the grass, he looked at the tree, and he looked at the trees and he wondered where, in what delusion he was living before that. And he was very happy for that day because that is the day he stopped listening to his brain and lived in the now. He was, when he lived in the now, he was able to appreciate certain things uh, about his sur surroundings, which he could not appreciate earlier. And um, yeah, you know, I don't think many of us stop and look at the day and wonder, oh my God, dude, it's such a beautiful day today. Um, we're always complaining. I often hear people in my city complaining about the weather. It's too hot. It gets a little less hot, and then they're like, oh my God, dude, another rain would do us good. Like, they're never going to be happy. Um, it's also a lot to do with appreciating things in the moment, in the now. Um, you must not forget that each beautiful past moment that you cherish and hold on to so dearly was once upon a time a now. So what you're missing in the past was a now which came to you when you thought it was 
best thing that can happen to you. And uh, it's a way more complex book than I'm letting it out there. Let me just be honest with you. But it's so simplified and told in such a magnificent way that uh, I would suggest it to all of you out there. Um, uh, what else? Why did I give it to the people I gave it to? Um, because there are certain examples in the book, you know, which were reminding me of them, of what people do. But most of them, most of the examples in the book, I could like put on myself and say, okay, dude, this is what I do all the time. Um, I will read other books by the author. I give this book a perfect five star out of five. It's one of the best books I've read this year. If you don't know how many books I've read, I must say it, dude, because nobody reads this much. I've read 35 books so far this year. And this was maybe the 30th or 28th book. So um, definitely read it. I'm not a big fan of non-fiction books. I like living in an imaginary world. Um, but this was something else, guys. Like, I saved a note on my phone and on my iPad in which I wrote many of the things which the author says, you know, because I found it so insanely enlightening. And I think the process has started. I don't know, there's been a shift in the way I look at things and uh, I don't like to dwell on things very long. Yes, there is a grief period, but you need to let go. Um, I'm an unhappy person sometimes and uh, there's a constant uh, cognitive di dissonance, brackets, uh, there's a constant uh, um, yes or no going on in my brain with respect to many things, you know whether it's a virtue, whether it's a vice, whether it's uh, doing something in life, go read it.